Hi, this is Dimitri Bilgier, and I'd like to talk to you today about this idea of focus and getting all your wood behind one arrow. I love that saying, get all your wood behind one arrow. It's a saying that's often said to uh, startups and entrepreneurs because what they often do is they'll say, okay, we're basically going to take our effort and it'll be like a scatter gun, like a shotgun. And we're going to shoot it at the wall and it's just going to go everywhere. We're going to try being all things to all people and doing everything. Because if we do that, something will succeed. And then when that something succeeds, we'll just draw a target around it and say, that's what we were aiming for. And it's, a, it's a, a really common way of thinking, and I'm going to put to you in this video, that's a problem that you need to work against in your life, is this idea that we'll just do concurrent development of everything, we'll do everything at once, and then when something hits the bullseye, we'll say, bingo, we did it. Um, what you really want to be focusing on is getting all your wood behind one arrow, shooting as much as possible towards one thing. Boom. This is the direction I'm going with as few other things as possible. Uh, this is true, I think, if you're an entrepreneur or any area in your life. Because for everybody, you're saying, well, what's important to me? And you want to have as few things be top priority as possible. Uh, a brilliant guy, Merlin Mann, I heard him say, and I don't know if he made it up, but he said, uh, priorities are like arms. Uh, you only have two of them. You can only have two of them. You can say you have more than two, but then you only have two and you're, now you're crazy. So it's a, it's a similar idea of we need to focus up, but our, but our impulse is to do that scattergun thing. So let's look at why the scattergun thing doesn't work. I was reading a thing online recently about... Um, uh, user interface design. Oh, that's exciting. And the guy was saying the most expensive, the most cognitively expensive thing is context switching. Uh, and they were talking about going from one context in a program to another of a whole different set of controls. But I was thinking, you know, that's really true in life too. It's when you go from one thing to another, when you switch contexts, that is expensive. Um, so we want to talk about it's it's context switching. Going from one thing to another is hard. So you want to have as few priorities as possible so you can be on one track. I, I like to say that, you know, actually, like for me, jogging isn't so hard. Starting jogging is hard. And if you think about it, that's true for almost any behavior. And I'll put a link in my blog post below to a thing that I wrote about this, going from one thing to another being difficult. Almost any behavior is easy once you're doing it, at least comparatively easy to how difficult it is to start. So if you have a bunch of priorities, going from focusing to one and focusing on another is a huge leak in, um, in your effectiveness. So you want as much as possible to get all your wood behind one arrow so you don't have the expense of context switching. So okay, I'm saying it's important to have all your wood behind one arrow. That doing a lot of context switching is really psychologically expensive more than you think. So what we're really saying is we're pursuing what's the sort of grail that everybody's been after for a long time? Focus, especially in our modern world. How do we get focus? How do you get focus in your life? How do people do this? Well, uh, I like to follow technology stuff and um, read about tech companies. It's just sort of a hobby of mine. And I was reading a thing where Steve Jobs was saying, or maybe one of them was saying, that for Apple, all, everything they make could fit on your kitchen table. Everything they make. Uh, and someone asked Steve Jobs, how do you feel now that Apple has surpassed Microsoft in value when that happened for like a minute? And uh, he said, well, you know, that's not really why we do this. We don't, that's not what gets us out of the morning. That's not what motivates us, being the most valuable company isn't what motivates us. They are clear on what motivates them and clear on what they're doing. We're doing these few things, right? So you need clarity. If you're going to have focus, All right, you need to be clear about what's important and what's not important. To quote Steve Jobs again, he said, uh, he often has said, we are as proud of the things at Apple that we have not done as we are the things that we've done. 
and that people think that, uh, that focus and clarity is all about saying yes, but it's actually about saying no. It's the things you say no to so that you can say, all right, everything we do fits on the kitchen table. This is what we do, not those other things. This is who we are, not those other people, and this is what's important to me not these other things. I want you to be able to have this, to have, because if you have that kind of clarity, it becomes obvious what to focus on. And it becomes obvious what to say no to when you have that level of clarity. So what leads to clarity? I would put to you that simplicity leads to clarity. And, and for me, I'm going to talk about that as an inner kind of simplicity. That this is where it, you sort of go inside. And, and I, I say to myself, well, I want to be a simple man who has a simple set of priorities so that things are clear. And I want things to be clear so that I know what to focus on. It's easy to do that. So I don't get drawn off by lots of different contexts that it's very psychologically expensive to switch back and forth between. So how do we be simple? And <clears throat> for me, I think that first of all, it's, it's a commitment to have inner simplicity. And the best way that I've seen to have inner simplicity is to have a relationship with something greater that you commit yourself to being simple before. Right? For me, I call that God. I want to be simple before God. And I want to show up with simplicity and forthrightness and directness and wholesomeness. So just be very simple in that. You've probably noticed if you've ever been in a situation where you're really feeling a lot of blessing coming to you, <clears throat> whether it's a religious experience or some sort of a psychological experience or a process or whatever, you're feeling a lot of blessing, you actually feel very simple inside. There's not a whole lot of complexity in you. And I would put to you that that's a state that you really, it's a good idea to cultivate. And for me, the way that works best is simplicity before God. What's it like when I'm simple, I'm small, I'm not big? You know, the universe is infinite. And you and I, we're almost infinitely small in the face of that huge, gigantic, infinite universe. And just to spend time in that sense of, yeah... I am really small and the universe is really big and how do I relax into that? How do I allow that to open up and show me the experience of that inner simplicity? That clarity of that inner simplicity. Right? When I have not a lot going on inside and I become clear, then the focus becomes obvious. So what I like about this is this is a track from going to an inner world to an outer world. I become simple inside. I open to the simplicity of who I am and the blessings of something greater. I let that fill me up and then from there I ask the question, what are the things that are most important to me? And then from there, well from that, what is it obvious to do? So I hope you'll try that for yourself and just spend a few minutes letting yourself clear your mind be simple, letting yourself find out what, your, what, what clarity that brings you and then deciding what your focus will be from there. It'll really help you step away from the constant context switching, from the shooting at the wall and hoping something hits, from the concurrent development of every good idea. I think it'll make your life better. So this is Dimitri Bilgir, signing off.